Looking for the best DMR handheld ham radio? In this video, we've done an extensive review of the top three handheld DMR radios, and we rated them according to features, audio clarity, display, and value for money. Before we dive in, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss a video from us. Price information and all radios mentioned in the video are available in the description, so let's get started. Number three, TYT MD UV380. Though presented as a low-cost radio, TYT Radio MD UV380 is a capable device. It it might seem rough around the edges, but it runs on a solid platform and delivers good performance. The appearance of the TYT MD UV380 matches its budget roots. It looks plain, average at best, and its body could perhaps be better served with a sturdier feel. The front of the radio can be seen as three sections, each of which is roughly the same size. Going from the bottom to the top, the three sections are the keypad, the color display, and the speaker. One side of the radio holds the PTT and associated buttons, while the other has room for a conventional two-pin connector for the mic and headset. The screen is bright but not very crisp and shows relevant information clearly. The screen clarity is useful as you wade through menus or program the radio. MDUV380 is front panel programmable and users can handle most of the functions right from the keypad. However, using the software can make several things move faster like adding contacts to the radio. You will need a programming cable for some setup options though. TYT provides its own software to make this work, though users may try other firmware options as well. Notable specs on the radio include a dual band VHS UHF, UHF function, TDMA digital function, dual display, and dual standby. It is compatible with DMR Tier 1 and Tier 2 and can work with analog and digital combined. All these are very desirable features in a DMR radio and quite impressive for a radio at this price range. To make things work smoothly for several hours, the radio draws power from a 2000 mAh lithium-ion battery. The battery provides good backup, though charging it through the radio's cradle can take excruciatingly long. Users may consider buying an additional battery so an option is available while the other battery gets charged. Of course, how long the battery lasts will also depend on the usage and power consumed by the radio. The transmit power here is 5 watts high and 1 watt low, although those who intend to use the radio as a hotspot can program it to go as low as 100 milliwatts. Overall, TYT MD UV380 is a feature-rich and capable DMR handheld transceiver with a proven track record. It's fairly easy to use, though programming can have a bit of a learning curve. The resilient platform makes it a popular choice and it shows up in several variations. These variations and models aren't just from TYT, but from other brands as well. Let's look through a few of these options, which will also help differentiate between the models available. TYT MD380 is a monoband radio, as opposed to TYT MD UV380, which is dual band. Another option option is the TYT MD390. This is basically the same radio, but with a case that allows the radio an IP67 protection rating, signifying waterproofing for this model. Optional GPS is available on both of these radios. Overall, the radio runs on a tried, tested, and trusted system. The platform is popular and has shown up in several successful DMR radios. Number 2. Any Tone AT D878 U7 Plus AnyTone AT D878 UVII Plus is one of the better known DMR radios. This versatile radio is feature rich and although not cheap, it does offer good value for money. Available features include built-in GPS, Bluetooth, and the ability to transmit and receive APRS transmissions. The ability to work with APRS is kind of a big deal here. AnyTone AT D878 UVII Plus model series is one of the first, perhaps the first, radio manufactured in China to include APRS. Conventionally, this technology shows up in radios manufactured in Japan for devices within the Yesu ecosystem. The radio does a decent job of TX and RX using APRS. It's not ideal and can be annoyingly buggy at times, but it can get the job done. Though it is a newer model, AnyTone AT D878 UVII Plus is pretty much the same as the AnyTone AT D878 UVII. These radios have held the same appearance, dimensions, and interface. The most important difference here is that the Plus model gets room for 500,000 contacts. That's a significant upgrade over the 200,000 contacts in the previous models. The higher number of contacts is a functional necessity for DMR radios. The number of contacts in a worldwide DMR database is more than 200,000 at this point. While the older models will continue to function, they will lose some contacts. On that note, for whatever reason, the company has chosen to go with this weird naming scheme. This radio's model name is ATD878. Everything else represents iterations of the product. I think it would be more sensible to give the device a product name that's easier for the customers. The radio is compatible with DMR Tier 1 and Tier 2. 
so it shouldn't have trouble communicating with any DMR radio on the market. While it works on digital transmission, the handheld radio works as an analog transceiver as well. As a dual-band radio, Anytone AT-D878UVII Plus works with VHF and UHF bands. Shifting between digital and analog modes is quick and pain-free. The radio works on an impressive 3100 mAh battery. That's enough to provide the radio with a lot of juice, and it makes good use of it. The maximum RF output power on VHF is 7 watts, though users can choose 5, 2.5, Five or 0.2 watts. Similarly, UHF has max TX power at 6 watts, though 5, 2.5, and 0.2 watts are also available. On that note, 5 watts is usually the max RF output for handheld hand radios. While more power seems alluring, it's likely not a healthy choice. Smart money is on the low power and letting a good antenna or repeater do its job. An interesting thing here is the Bluetooth PTT. It's a button on a small strap that allows the user to speak on the radio without actually handling it. The button's a nice touch for going hands free, though the DMR radio supports other means as well. You could connect any Bluetooth headphones or headset with the radio for communication. There are other interesting features as well, like built-in GPS and front-face programming with VFO channels. The presence of FFP allows users to add repeaters and other frequencies directly to the handheld radio without first going through programming. Even with the FFP, there's a lot to learn and understand about this handheld DMR radio. Though increasingly popular, it's still a new technology that people are still getting familiar with. To that end, the company offers a training course that includes tutorials, support, training, and guides. Any tones or bridge comm systems proclaimed value for this course is $97. I'm not a fan of the idea. Providing support, manuals, and guides is the responsibility of the seller or manufacturer. Attaching a monetary value to it, even if it's offered for free, is a terrible practice. Number one, Islands HD1 DMR radio, digital mobile radio, has made significant inroads into the conventional ham radio space. It's a relatively new technology and takes on the decades-old ham radio setup. Its use of digital systems provides some functional benefits, though the technology has yet to mature. The potential of DMR shows wonderfully with the Islands HD1 DMR radio. A combination of interesting features and digital technology can make it easier for some beginners. There is a viable overlap between mobile phones and their usability. While not necessary for hams, it is usually recommended that DMR register for a unique ID. This ID is somewhat analogous to a cell phone number and can be used for direct contact or even sending SMS texts. Islands HD1 DMR can store 200,000 numbers and work with 3,000 channels. Thanks to dual band compatibility, it can transmit and receive on analog as well as digital frequencies. With all these features, Islands HD1 DMR radio is somewhat expensive, but the pricing isn't really unheard of for ham radios or even DMRs. Its competitor, Anytone AT-D878UVII Plus, gets a higher price tag with a similar technology. To be fair, the higher price tag does win the Anytone AT-D878U7 Plus a few extra features, like a 500,000 storage for contact lists and a 7-watt output power. Though any tone can be programmed through a computer or through the front panel, FFP, it's a bit more difficult to set up compared to the iLens HD1. As a handheld radio, it has an impressive 3200 mAh battery that can last up to 16 hours in continuous use or 7 days in standby mode. The GPS on this device presents the location, but also altitude bearing and speed. This can come quite in handy in several situations and is especially useful for emergencies. Other notable features of this radio include FPP, front panel programming, and IP67, waterproofing. FPP means users can access all functions on the radio through its keypad and can set or customize features. The IP67 waterproofing means it can survive being submerged in one meter of water for up to 30 minutes. The dual band function on the Islands HD1 DMR allows it to TX and RX on analog as well as digital frequencies. While the function is seamless, the digital approach of DMR is something of a departure from traditional hands. It offers some convenience of learning to beginners, but that comes more as a familiarity with digital devices like mobile phones rather than conventional ham radios. Overall, this is the best handheld DMR radio for beginners. So what do you think? Which of these is the best DMR handheld ham radio for you? Or do you think another radio is better? Tell us in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Have an awesome day.